you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it Lord Jesus we just thank you for our time together we thank you for everybody that volunteers to help kid life Jesus and we thank you for all the children that may be watching Lord God that they hear what you need to, them to hear Lord Jesus we just thank you we bless you and we honor you in Jesus name we pray amen <laughs> Where'd you get that toy? I found it over there. It's really fun. Hey, it's mine. No, it isn't. I found it. I don't care if you found it. It's mine and I want it back. Well, too bad I have it now. Give it back. No, it's mine. It's mine now. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh my. Those two seem to be really struggling. They both want the same toy and they have mastered the word mine. Oh man. That word mine is often one of the first words a baby learns. Right along with mama and dada, they learn the word mine. That's because there's something in every person that makes them wanna keep what they have for themselves. The word for that is selfishness. Selfishness is the opposite of what God wants for us in our lives. He has blessed us with so much, but it's not so we can keep it to ourselves. We shouldn't hold on to our blessings and say, mine! Instead, God has blessed us so we can bless others. We shouldn't keep stuff to ourselves, we should share. Sharing is not something kids get very excited about. Just like those kids earlier, often we're tempted to fight over things. But Jesus wants us to share what we've received. Remember, you've been blessed, so bless others. Don't say mine, choose to share. And you're gonna learn all about that in your lesson today. Until next time, see ya! What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? Hey there kids, I'm Big Ray, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about sharing. So anytime someone asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. I won't be selfish, I'll share with you. I am so thankful for everything God has given me. I am so blessed. I'm thankful for my house, for my cars, my family, my toys, my money, and of course my pet shark. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff. 
I bet you give a lot to other people too, don't you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. This is my stuff. I earned this. I'm not giving anything to nobody. Wait, 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 wait a minute now. Uh, that sounds selfish. What you talking about? Everything you have is a gift from God. It's not even yours. We are blessed when we share with others. Be generous and share what you have. So anytime someone asks you what you gotta know, you tell them this. I won't be selfish, I'll share with you. And that right there is what you gotta know. I'm Big Ray, and I'll catch you on the flip side. What you gotta know. Game on.
so kind to me Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Deuteronomy 15.10 says, Give generously, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Anna, and I get to tell you the Bible story today and the teaching. Let's pray and invite God to be a part, okay? Lord, I thank you for your Bible. I thank you for your word and all these true stories. Holy Spirit, I pray you would speak through me. Show us what you want us to learn and let us know you more, God, because that's what it's all about. Bless my friends for being here and making time for you. Thank you that you're real with us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So our Bible story, the address for our Bible story is found in um, 2 Kings chapter 7. You can look it up in your Bible, okay? Um, it's a story about the prophet Elijah. So what's going on in this story is um, the nation of Sar Samaria, sorry, the nation of Samaria was at war with the Armenians. All right, and the Armenians have put a siege around Samaria, which means they basically surrounded it so nobody could bring any food inside of the nation. So they were starving, okay? They were starving in Samaria. They hadn't had any food for a long, long time. It was really bad. And, um, and Elisha actually spoke to the king. He got a word from God. So that's a prophet. They hear from God, and then they tell the people what God says, okay? And it still happens today, guys. It's a, um, it's a gift from the Holy Spirit. And um, he said something pretty crazy. He just said, hey, guys, um, it's all going to change. It's all going to change. I know you're hungry, but tomorrow, tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of food. So you're basically starving now, but tomorrow there's going to be a lot of food. And one of the king's officials basically is like, uh, yeah, right. He totally didn't believe it, but he should have paid attention because everything Elisha had said came true. And that's the test of a prophet does what they say come true. So, it, um, but he wasn't paying attention. And you know what happened? So at about the same time, um, not long after that, I'm sorry, um, the next day there were four lepers. And lepers were people that had this skin disease that basically made their body parts stop falling out. And it was just, it was awful. There was no cure. And when you had leprosy, you couldn't live in the city because it was contagious. That means other people could get it by being around you. So they made you live outside the city. 
and they were starving too. And they were kind of at the city gate and they're like, we're going to die just sitting here. They're like, well, maybe we could go to the the enemy's camp and just surrender. I mean, maybe they'll have mercy on us and, um, and, and we'll live. Or if they'll kill us, well, that, that's good too, because we're, we're hungry and we're just going to die anyway. So they actually went to the enemy's camp. And when they got to the enemy's camp, there was nobody there. Everybody was gone because here's the cool thing. You know what God did? I just love God, what he can do without us doing anything to help us. He actually had that enemy camp, the Arminians, hear like a sound, like, a, you know, like hooves and what they thought and and gave, a, you know, put a thought in their mind. They're like, oh, the they've hired the Egyptians and the, the other people and they're coming to get us. We better get out of here. So God called them to hear a sound that wasn't even there. And, and they ran away and totally left their camp with all the food, all the stuff. They left it there and they ran away. Not even did they see anything. They heard something. They got fearful. They ran. How cool is that? God totally got rid of their enemies with a perception that wasn't even true. <laughs> so um, anyways, when they got there, all that stuff was there and they're like, what? They just start eating because they were starving. They're like, this is it. Oh, and then all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute. This isn't right. You know, we shouldn't be just eating this all ourselves. Um, you know, this, what we're doing is not, what we're doing is not right. So this is a day of good news and we're keeping it to ourselves. So they made a really good decision. They remembered, you know, all these people in Samaria, they're starving. So they went to the city and they, they yelled, you know, because they had to kind of yell far away because people were scared of them having leprosy and they, they, and they, um, they told everybody, they yelled at the gate and they're like, Hey, we found some food. They told the guards and soon all the people went out and they saw, they were telling the truth and they brought all the food in and there was a ton of food, just like Elijah has said, for everybody. But part of that was because the lepers were willing to share. They could have literally just lived in that camp and just kept eating, right, forever. But they did the right thing and they remembered the other people that were starving and they told the other people. So the title the title of today's message is called Mine. So today's lesson is actually not just called Mine. It's Mine and then the little part underneath says Learning to Share. So that's what I know you guys have been learning to share since you were little, right? Sharing is caring. That's what I used to always say when I talk. Um, actually, everyone can learn from that. Sharing is caring. So, um, but um, anyways, we want to talk about how we are, it's a blessing. We, God wants us to share what we have. He's given us so, so much. And I've got some you know, gifts that represent that God has given us a lot of gifts, right? And, um, and he's blessed us in many ways, so many ways. And he's blessed us. That Bible actually says that he made Abraham blessed and a blessing. And, and, and that's the same promise for us. God blesses us, makes us blessed and a blessing. So blessed, not just for us. He loves to bless us. We're his kids and he loves to bless us, but it's not just for us. It's also to be a blessing. Okay. It's also to be a blessing. And honestly, guys, you know, Jesus actually says in the Bible, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And you're like, what? No, I'm like, but really there's a supernatural thing. Just like God gave to us when we give on his behalf, it's a supernatural and it's pretty amazing. They actually did this experiment and they had, they gave people money and they had, they had some people just spend the money on themselves. And they had some people um, give part of the money and then spend part of the money. And they measured like the happiness afterwards and the people that gave part of the money were happier. So it is a supernatural. There is a supernatural um, joy to it. And, um, and so we're going to talk, we're going to talk more about this. So first of all, God has given you so much. One of my favorite verses, James 
chapter 117 says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down from God our Father. Everything we've got that's good, it's from God. So that's number one. It's from God. God has given us so much. And the second point is say no to selfishness. Because guys, it's a temptation. It's a temptation. You got something and you're like, hmm, do I share? Do I keep it all for myself? Because if I share, if I give part of this away, I'm going to have less, right? I'm going to have less. Um, So there is a temptation. There's a temptation to want to keep everything for ourselves and not to give. And remember, we talked about this, that God has blessed us not just for ourselves, but to be a blessing. And he doesn't ask us to give what we you know, what we don't have. And, um, and we know some people have more. He's just talking about what you have. Um, and he shows this and, and basically there's one, another story where there was a widow, it's called the widow's mite. I want to say the widow's penny, basically. Jesus is watching these people give and some people are giving like, let's say a million dollars. And some people are giving like all this stuff. And this one widow, which meant she had no husband, she wasn't married, which was a big deal back then because women couldn't, they didn't have the way to earn income like they do now. They didn't have very many rights. And, um, and so she came up and she gave, it says a mite, which means like probably like a penny. Okay. And Jesus actually looked and said, she gave more than all of them combined. All those people gave millions of millions because she gave all she had. So God is just looking at what you have and, and you give up, uh, give what you have. You can't give what you don't have. <laughs> you give what you have. So God's called us to be blessed and a blessing. And here's the last point. And this is so true because I love God. He's just, he is a good, good father, guys. He is, he is, he is. This says, share with others and you'll be blessed. Okay. Uh, our power verse for today, give generously for the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do, Deuteronomy 15, 10. There's another verse in the Bible and it says, give and it shall be given to you. See, um, God is never trying to keep us from anything. God's never trying to take anything from us. He's always trying to bless us, guys. And I've seen it time and time again. When I truly, not just physical things like this gift, but, but let's say not just gifts or money, things, but time, talent. When I've seen what I've really given out of just obedience and just trying to be a blessing with a pure heart, God always blesses me through it. Not just for the great feeling you get, because you really do get it. It's a great spiritual feeling when you bless others. It really is, because that's what God made us to do. And when we know him and have a spirit in us, we have that desire to want to do, because we want to be like our father, you know. But he always uses it to bless us in return. And I've seen that time and time again. When I'm doing something to step out to bless him, he uses that very thing to bless me. You know, because our God is amazing and good and he cares and he loves to see his kids giving and he wants to bless us so we can be a greater blessing because he's like, oh, they're willing to give part of what they have. I can give them more because they're going to use it to bless people. I can I can give them because they're going to give and God wants to bless all people and it brings him so much glory and it draws other people to know him, guys. So, you know, and another story of an example of how that happened, another Bible story. Remember, there was a time when when Jesus was talking to all these people and he's like, he's like, let's feed them. And they had nothing. And one little boy had one little lunch, one little happy meal. And he was willing to give his happy meal. I'm sure he had to think, if I give this up, I'm not going to have anything to eat. He actually gave all he had, all he had. He gave his lunch. He was hungry. I'm sure he had been there all day, too. Here, here's, here's my lunch. Very little, right? Very little. And God used that little bit and turned it and fed over 5,000 people. And I'm sure that boy went home with some leftovers, right? So he got to eat a lot and got to bless everybody as a part of that and probably went home with leftovers. And that's just like our God. When you give out of a pyramid of and giving it unto him, he will take it and bless other people and bless you. I love it. God's amazing. And it might not happen right away. You might not see it happen right away. Might take time, might be a seed, but it will happen because the the Bible's true. 
give and it shall be given unto you. You will be blessed. The Bible is true. And I've seen it time and time again, guys. Come and pray because it's not easy. And naturally in this flesh, remember we have a battle going on. We have a relationship with Jesus. His Holy Spirit comes in us. It wants to follow God. He wants to follow God. This body wants to do what it wants to do and look out for itself. And it's got its own, you know, what about me? What about me? And the end, that's what Joyce Meyer would say. What about me? That's what the flesh says. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, what about God? God, let's follow God. Let's follow God. And they're constantly battling each other. So we don't want to give into that flesh because you end up empty. It's, it actually says if you live a life like that, you're going to be empty and death. Do you live a life by the Spirit, following the Holy Spirit inside, doing what God wants to do? Then you're going to be blessed and alive in life. So I'm going to pray. Sorry. You know, guys, I like to talk a lot. So, Lord, I just thank you so much that you're real. I thank you for your promises in the Bible. And I thank you that you bless us so much. You give us so much, God. You give us so much. Thank you for those blessings. Help us be mindful. Help us think of ways to use those blessings to be a blessing, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Help us see. Help us give. Help us bless. And thank you that you continually bless us and that we can be a vessel for a blessing to other people, that they can see your love and, and reality, right? Can see your love. Help us, God. Bless my friends now for giving of their time. Pour back into them overflowing like your word says. We love you. We thank you that you're a good, good father. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now I want to tell you about how you can know God. You see, God created you to know him and have a relationship with him. I'm going to pretend that these Lego people are God and us, even though we know God's not a Lego person or us. Anyways, God created us to know Him and to have a relationship with Him. He created us in His image and He loves us so much. Then something bad happened, you see. Man sinned against God. He made a bad choice. And when he did, sin entered the world. <laughs> I'm sin! Sin is any bad choice that we make. And the Bible says that we have all sinned. We've all done something wrong and that it separates us from God. <laughs> and there's nothing we can do to get to God on our own. We cannot be good enough to get to God. No, you can't get to God. <laughs> but you see, God did not want it that way. So he made a way that we could know him. He sent his son Jesus into the world as a baby and he grew up to be a man and he lived a perfect life but he died an awful death on the cross for us for our sins but he didn't stay dead he rose from the dead three days later and when he did that he defeated sin ah! and the bible says that if we believe that and receive what Jesus did by asking God to forgive our sins and making Jesus our Lord and Savior. That, do you know what happens? Our sins are forgiven, our hearts are washed clean. Ah! And God comes and puts his spirit in us and makes us his children. And we're reunited with him through Jesus. Now, I'm gonna give you a chance to pray with me to receive what Jesus did on the cross so you can know God. Will you bow your heads with me and repeat after me? God, I believe in you. I believe Jesus is your son. I believe that he lived a perfect life and died an awful death on the cross and then rose from the dead Please forgive me of all the bad things I've done. Wash my heart clean and make me alive on the inside. Your child. I want to know you, God. Teach me to know you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Awesome. Oh my gosh, that was such a good service. Did you enjoy the service, Pee Pee? I 
Girls, Pastor Anna here. Hey, we want to ask you something. Would you like us to pray for you? If you have a prayer request, something you want us to agree with you to ask God for, email us at kids at lifesourcechurches.com. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We love you guys and we want to pray for you. So have a great week. Hey friends, I wanted to ask you, will you please like this video by clicking the thumbs up? And please hit the subscribe button if you like it, then you can get all our videos. And also, can you feed me a worm, please? Thank you.